What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Slava Tech once again, and today we have yet another review video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the MSI RX 6700 XT Gaming X Edition and its mining performance in Ethereum and Ravencoin. But before we get into it, here's a word from our sponsor. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people alike on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and even cryptocurrency. As a content creator and cryptocurrency enthusiast, Skillshare offers me the tools to sharpen my videography skills with classes like Video on a Budget, Prepare for Your Shoot Without Breaking the Bank, and for cryptocurrency, Accounting 101, Accounting Rules for Crypto and Bitcoin. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they are always launching new premium classes. So you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Welcome back, so here's the card right there it's a nice thick boy and funny enough if you go look at their website they go ahead and mention that it has fully covered memory modules with thermal pads now if you guys don't know why this is a little bit funny it's because the rx 5700 xt gaming edition from msi had notoriously terrible thermal pad coverage over the memory modules causing a lot of issues. Now you could get around this of course with replacing at least the thermal pads and getting a better surface covering, but because of the way the cooler was designed on the 5700 XT from MSI, it still didn't dissipate the heat quite as well as other models. This turned into a big issue and was popularized or brought to the forefront of for discussion by, of course, Gamers Nexus. So after Gamers Nexus came out with that, the price of the 5700 XT from MSI dropped severely low, around $300 a pop. And that's when I purchased all of my 5700 and 5700 XTs and I just replaced the thermal pads and they're still mining away to this day. So I wasn't too unhappy with it. It gave me a good opportunity to get in with some cheaper 5700s. But how does the 6700 XT stack up to the 5700 XT in mining? Well, a little bit of a spoiler here, not that great. But before we get into the mining performance, let's talk about the specifications. The RX 6700 XT is a PCI Express Gen 4 GPU with 2560 cores, with a memory speed of 16 gigabits per second, with 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 over a 192-bit bus. It has three DisplayPort 1.4 and one HDMI 2.1 for display outputs. It does support HDCP. And as far as power goes, it is two eight pin PCIe adapters with a recommended power supply of 650 watts if it's going into a gaming system. And then it supports DirectX 12, OpenGL 4.6, multi GPU, and up to four displays. Now, if you're into any of that for gaming or productivity, there you go. A big note is currently the Radeon driver is having a lot of issues still, which I was just testing again with Premiere, causing artifacting in the renders. So if you are a content creator, I still would recommend going NVIDIA. If you're purely gaming or gaming and streaming even, then I think the 6000 series is a good bet, especially if you have a good Ryzen processor for the streaming portion. And that's my personal opinion. Right now I am gaming on a 6900 XT and doing content creation on a 3090 personally. And obviously I have those because we've been mining and doing videos on them. So there you go. Okay, so let's talk about mining performance. Now, mining performance, obviously, you guys have probably already seen it already. It's not that great, right? Right out of the box, we are looking at about 43 mega hash a second with for Ethereum at 161 watts. 
don't freak out yet it is better than that and you can crank it down if you don't care to mess with things like the registry edits for more power tool and so on you can get that down to about 111 watts with of course phoenix miner at 46 mega hash a second or if you go ahead and grab the latest team red miner you can get it down to 105 watts with 46 mega hash a second finally my best overclock and best settings was using team red miner and then we went ahead and went into the more power tool and we adjusted it to go down to 672 millivolts what this did was allow the card to clock itself down or undervolt itself when we turned the frequency down to 1050 and it basically set the voltage to around 681 millivolts what this ended up netting us was 46 mega hash a second at 93 watts if you guys need a tutorial for using more power tool on the 6000 series let me know i have covered it in the past for the 6800 and of course the 6900 XT, but if you'd like a specific one for, of course, the 6700 XT, just let me know in the comment section below. So it's really not too shabby. Of course, we can get the 6800 to 95 watts at 60 mega hash a second. And due to the weird pricing right now, that might may be your best bet. Of course, I haven't seen very many 6800s floating around. It's mainly 6800 XTs and the MSI version of the 6800 XT, which they did have in stock at Micro Center, was a whopping $1,100, which is just insanity, because at that point, you probably want to be looking at something from NVIDIA, to be honest. So moving on to Ravencoin, we basically have the same memory overclock, which is 2150 megahertz, with the fast timing enabled, and the only difference is really how far we can turn down that core clock. In the case of Ravencoin, we could really only get it down to 2250 before significantly impacting the hash rate. What this means is that our power is at 143 watts, and then the hash rate was around 23.6 mega hash a second on Kapow. Taking a look at what to mine for these particular numbers as it sits today, on Ethereum, the 6700 XT would revenue $5.72 with $5.50 after power, while on Ravencoin it would be $2.96 before power and $2.62 after power. Now we didn't test other algorithms currently because those seem to be the only ones that are profitable at this time there are some other options that we do need to start looking at eternity aeon and so forth but really they're still not competitive in the fashion that ravencoin and ethereum currently are so that's why we have those up here now my final thoughts on the rx 6700 xt is pretty much this right now if you use the more power tool you can get it to be respectable and if you can purchase it for that retail price between the 479 and 600 and you wait in line at micro center that could make some sense here's the problem though micro center is starting to get rx 5700 xts in from power color and those are running for 599 seeing that the 6700 XT is pretty much close to, if not more, depending on the model, than the 5700 XT and yet has worse mining performance, you would preferably want to just pick up the 5700 XT at Micro Center instead of grabbing the 6700 XT. And that's kind of where we end it because the thing is there too, we don't have the option of strapping memory timings. AMD has blocked and locked the BIOS on the 6000 series. And it's super frustrating. This is something that AMD has not done in the past. It is new and really is a huge disappointment for me with the Radeon team. And I hope that they unlock them and stop it with the BS. Because if we could play around with the GDDR6 memory, see if we could strap it, change the timings around, 
we could probably get a lot better mining performance out of the 6000 series GPUs and I'd really like to play with it. Unfortunately, it's just not something we can do. The only thing we can basically do is the registry edits to turn the power down and then we're kind of stuck there. And I, I just, I don't know what's going to happen in the future, especially because like every step or every generation the GPU manufacturers lock down more and more and more. And Nvidia is now locking down more and more and more, trying to block people from mining, of course, that was unsuccessful with the 3060, but that tells you what direction the manufacturers are going in. Radeon taking this direction and not allowing us to modify the BIOS, even though we have dual BIOS switches on a lot of the 6000 series, is just absolutely absurd. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe down below, and I'll see you next Tuesday. If you enjoyed this content, you can check out more crypto content on this playlist up here, or of course, go ahead and subscribe for more in the future. Adios.